What you gonna do, brother, when the crypto bull run comes to you? The ticker is SmackDown on Ethereum blockchain, brother. We're the first and only wrestling-themed crypto, and we're bridging wrestling and cryptocurrency to make the most electrifying meme coin in crypto history. Ooh. Meme coins like Doge, Pepe, and Shiba Inu are leading the upcoming bull run, and we got the juice to turn our two passions into the next crypto phenomenon. Join the community at SmackDown.pro. The coin is Stone Cold Rock Cena Macho McMahon SmackDown 10 Inu, and the ticker is SmackDown. Just remember, brother, it's for life. This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The one that everybody wants, me. This is my eye. You're going to acknowledge me. Welcome to the current state of WWE. We've got Anthony DeMarco back with us, as we always do every single Monday night, to talk about what's on our minds for what's going on in WWE right now. And as we are about two weeks, a little less than two weeks away from Survivor Series, we have a new United States champion and a guy that came in as a YouTube star, but I think has really won over a lot of people with his ability in the ring. And we're going to focus a little bit on Logan Paul tonight. But first, welcome, Anthony. How are you doing? Not too bad, man. And pretty interesting news coming out today regarding the new United States champion, Logan Paul, that he might be turning his full-time focus to WWE, announcing his retirement from boxing. I believe he did that on a show on Fox, a sports talk radio show. I forget which one it was exactly. But it seems like he's kind of going... Uh, you know what deep into WWE and this is kind of like what we spoke about right when he won the championship at Saudi Arabia that this had to be the potential for a really really significant run with him as the U.S. champion and one that had a lot of promise if he were to commit at least semi full-time so if this is true and we're gonna see a full-time or close to full-time version of Logan Paul on SmackDown where do you think this is headed? Well, I mean, with uh, with the, the the place for him to be on SmackDown, I think, is a good place to be. We, we certainly don't need another absentee champion. We have had enough of that over the last couple of years. And I think him retiring from boxing, or at least for the time being retiring from boxing, is very promising because beyond the fact that we don't want somebody as a, a, an absentee champion all, again – you do want somebody that's fully focused on on the championship and you want somebody able to be there at least semi regularly. I would even be him be being OK if he's on every other smackdown. I actually don't need him on every smackdown. Um, you know, our our standards at this point are so low that we would take him being there once a month. Uh, you know, that would actually be considered full time compared to Roman. But when you look at this, I think you have a United States champion that, you know, is going to put on kick-ass matches you know is going to be able to deliver in the ring and on the microphone so i'm looking forward to his his potential opponents and you know as i look at the roster he does have a, a pretty good amount of guys he hasn't been able to work with yet and you know we can certainly run down some of those names well the other part that you mentioned in there that's so important in all of this is another absentee champion we cannot have that on smackdown that is not something that we need or should get. And this was a SmackDown that we just saw that the only championship that was featured was the women's uh, championship, not the world's champion. What is it? The WWE women's champion? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah, that's what it's called. So on the men's side this week on SmackDown, there was no men's champion, no world title, no mid card title, no tag title. And that's okay for a one-off, but we have to make sure that Logan Paul is there and the United States Championship is featured. Because you look at what its counterpart on Monday Night Raw has done over the last 15 months around the race with the ways of Gunther and how important that title has felt. And I do think Triple H in his early days as head of creative did a good job to build the U.S. title up on Monday Night Raw when it was the main championship when Roman Reigns had both titles hijacked. But in order to regain that after a very dull 2023 to this point, after lackluster runs of Austin Theory, 
and Rey Mysterio, it first and foremost has to be featured weekly. Am I right? Oh, absolutely. Especially, like we said, with Roman gone, the you know, tag team champions seems to be uh, stuck on, on on Monday Night Raw. That absolutely needs to be the case. Yes. And when I look at the, some of the people he can work with, I mean, it opens up a ton of possibilities. Kevin Owens being one, of course, I, I would imagine that L.A. Knight is probably at the top of the list as well. And and I think this is this is going to be a lot of fun. You're right, though. This needs to be a much more present champion. I know he's a heel, but he needs to be here every week. Actually, is probably best. It's just sad that I have been conditioned to believe that anything beyond once a month is actually considered a, you know a lot of time on SmackDown if a champion shows up. So uh, I'm excited for this. Actually, I mean, I I came in despising Logan Paul. I didn't want him here, and they try to push the baby face thing that quickly went south but now he's really con he's he's coming into his own character his 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 promos have felt much more comfortable than they have over the last year or two and i am i'm loving where this is at because i think he's going to be a long reigning united states champion and the first question is obviously who will be the first the opponent for him. I don't imagine it's going to be Rey Mysterio. It feels like he's on a collision course with Santos Escobar and the impending implosion of the LWO. So who is that next guy? Like you look at LA Knight, I feel like he's tangling with the bloodline at this point. It feels like his time to go after the US title has already come and gone. Like it feels like he's past that. And then Sheamus, who you would imagine would be kind of next in line, hasn't been seen since his match with Edge in Toronto, Edge's farewell match in WWE. Could a returning AJ Styles be that guy? But for me, I look at Kevin Owens, and I know you talk, spoke about it on the WWE um, Week in Review, about how he's kind of like middling in no man's land right now. Obviously, has a very loose feud with Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. But he's a guy who has not held a singles championship since 2017. Conveniently enough, or coincidentally enough, the U.S. title when he was feuding with it over, um, he was feuding with AJ Styles over it um, on SmackDown Live that eventually led to his program with Shane McMahon and the eventual return of Daniel Bryan and all that. So when I look at the next opponent for Logan Paul, it's Kevin Owens, and maybe I'm looking too far down the line here, and you could extend this program probably right till WrestleMania, but... You, could, I would even make the case that Kevin Owens should be the next guy to de to hold that championship, just because of how long it's been since he's held a singles title. Yeah, that's that's fair. And Kevin Owens is in no man's land. The program he has with Austin Theory, and Grayson Waller, it's kind of like a slapstick comedy, fun but sometimes serious type of program that really no one's got a whole lot of emotional investment in. Kevin Owens is essentially free. I mean, like that. I don't consider him in in a program that he can't go anywhere with that he can come and go as he pleases. This is a, a Logan Paul, Kevin Owens match, I think, ready for the making. LA Knight, as you said, is staying, still tangled with the bloodline. And you know what? Maybe they don't even go LA Knight, Logan Paul yet uh, because LA Knight should be favored to win that. But if they want LA Knight to win the Rumble, I mean, this is where you, you start to long-term book. I mean, you can't have LA Knight lose to Logan Paul clean. Maybe he uses the Knox. I don't know. But uh, right now, Kevin Owens should be the first guy up. If you're talking about AJ Styles, absolutely. The problem would be, though, that when you look at AJ Styles and think about how he left with the bloodline injuring him, it wouldn't make sense for him to go into a program with Logan Paul and totally forget about the fact, oh, yeah, the bloodline's the reason I'm not back. And the bloodline's the reason I was out for a couple of months. So I, I think AJ Styles, though, that said, can quickly transition to Logan Paul um, if they want to go that road. I mean, you also look at other guys, too, that are on the fringe. I mean, you do have Bobby Lashley, who, you know, you could eventually get in there, but he's a he's kind of a heel at this point. Um, you know, outside of that, I mean, I really don't know. Dragon Lee, I mean, is another possibility. Um, but uh, this this is, uh, there's at least a good handful, five, five guys that we could probably rattle off as we did that are going to be able to work with Logan Paul in a very effective uh, program. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. So assuming Logan Paul is full time, and that doesn't mean wrestling every single SmackDown, but let's say he appears on at least two SmackDowns a month. He's on every PLE, has, let's say, one one match per month on, on SmackDown, like a relatively full time run. And to be honest, I think if you're a champion, one of the perks should be that you don't work the same full time schedule as everyone else. I think that that's a perfectly realistic uh, kind of perk for being a champion in a professional sport or a simulated professional sport. 
So assuming that we get a mostly full-time run of Logan Paul here and go beyond the United States Championship, but what kind of ceiling does this guy have? Because maybe save for Kurt Angle, I don't think anyone's picked it up as quickly and as naturally as Logan Paul has. But like in the last two decades, have we seen someone as such a natural as Logan Paul? No, no, this is... I understand the guy is a crazy athlete. He was into amateur wrestling. He was very successful as a boxer, lover or hate him. Put all our personal feelings aside. The guy has picked it up in record time. He is a mini Kurt Angle in that respect. Um, not to say he's Kurt Angle Olympic level quality, but in the, how quickly he's picked it up, he's compared all the time to that. And he has, he has no business being this good this quickly. He doesn't. He has what, like six, seven matches that, you know, in singles matches in front of live audiences. Like, uh, it's, it's, it's insane. And it feels like he has been here for five to 10 years to have this level of experience. Now, what's his ceiling? Of course, time's going to tell. We, we don't know what that is yet. I would imagine that it's at, at, at bare minimum at worst. It's, it's the fact that, okay, he has a one month run. His first opponent beats and Logan Paul kind of, you know, maybe goes back and forth between boxing and uh, WWE or something like that. Um, that's worst case. Best case is this guy has a U.S. championship through WrestleMania 40 and uh, retains through WrestleMania 40. I mean, and then continues on and has a sustained run. I think that is the ceiling at this point. I mean, to say what his ceiling is for his entirety of his career is, is a little bit more of a difficult question question to answer given we have such a small sample size but i think those are kind of the extremes of what we're looking at right now with logan paul so do you think that there's any legs for him to be a baby face eventually or is it just way too early to even forecast that type of version of logan paul because there are just so there's so much tread left on the tire with him as a heel because i was thinking about this today with with the roman reigns not around if he's there on a weekly or close to weekly basis, is he not the best fuel in the company? Now, look, a lot of that can change with Drew McIntyre, how much they elevate Damian Priest over the coming months with that that um, that Money in the Bank briefcase. Rhea Ripley, on the women's side of things, has a case to be made as just the best heel in the company, period, on both the men and women's side. But if Logan Paul actually... Be, like fully dedicates and commits and there's actually like legitimacy to what he said today or whenever it was to him going you know what deep into wwe and wrestling i think that this guy could be the biggest heel in the company by as early as this time next year especially depending on what happens with roman reigns and his schedule and what's interesting is you could actually have Roman and uh, Logan do a double turn at some point. I know they already had their matchup, the kind of one off, and now he's diving head first into the deep end and really going full time. If that if that is true, I mean you could have hit them do a double turn because at some point Roman is going to turn babyface. I still I predict it in the next uh, you know twelve months. I think by this time next year we could be talking about a babyface Roman. Uh, you know that's another discussion, of course. But Logan Paul. Right now, I don't think it's in the cards. Right now, he is on a nice heel run. He feels so much more comfortable as a heel in the ring. His brass knuck gimmick is is one that is, uh, again, reminds me of the William Regal days that has been sorely missed. I really enjoy what he brings in the ring. On the microphone, he's just arrogant as an actual human being. I think his actual arrogance as a person comes through, and it translates very nicely on TV. So, yeah, for at least the next 12 months, I mean, I would keep him a heel and see what you got and see how far you can go and then and, and kind of reevaluate. But uh, sure, you could turn him baby face. I mean, look what they, how quickly they turned the Miz baby face. He's been a heel for how many years and all of a sudden everyone feels bad and for the Miz and sympathy for the Miz. Um, you, you could do the same with Logan Paul. It's really not going to be that difficult because, <clears throat> you know, we'll feel bad if what if Logan Paul comes out and. And he does have some kind of faux injury. And then, the, you know, say a, a, a heel group comes out, beats him down and he's outnumbered. I mean, you you naturally gravitate towards the underdog. And if you see somebody getting beat down three, four on one, five on one, you're going to want to see that other person try to rise up and take them down. I mean, it's 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 not that difficult to do. But right now, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even be you know discussing it. When I look at both sides of the raw roster, Raw and SmackDown, and I see the star power that Logan Paul brings. Like with Roman Reigns not there on SmackDown, I think he has more star power than any full time competitor right now, including LA Knight. 
And on the Raw side of things, like, Seth kind of has that star power as much as we don't like the character. Cody Rhodes is over in that capacity as well. But I do think it's fair to say, with John Cena now leaving, Roman Reigns being on a part-time schedule, The Rock nowhere to be seen, Brock Lesnar on a hiatus for the last three months or so, this is a roster, specifically on the men's side, that lacks high-end star power on a week-to-week basis. And I know that a lot of people hate Logan Paul on a personal level, and that's kind of been, I guess, uh, shifted over to a character level as well, which is what you want. He is a mega, mega heel. But if he does he not bring a type of star power that is lacked heavily on both sides and on both brands? Oh, yeah, instantly. I mean, and I, I, that probably is one of the biggest contributing factors for WWE giving this guy an opportunity is the fact that he has how many, you know, how many tens of millions of social media followers that WWE is looking at and saying, hey, can we translate these into dollar signs? Like they looked at his followers and probably just saw dollar signs. And I would, too, because you're thinking even if you bring over less than one percent, like a half of a percent of one of those people into regular viewership, they become uh, viewers, regular viewers, and then they start buying you know, merchandise and attending live events. I'm looking at this I'm, if I'm WWE and saying cha-ching, because, again, even though you understand a small, small fraction of those people are going to become wrestling fans, you still are, are able to cast a wide net and try to reach some of those people. And I think they will. And I think that's, again, a part of the reason why they brought him over is his star power, is his social media influence. He's one of the biggest social media stars on the planet. And on top of that, he's he's insanely good in the ring and he is coming into his own on the microphone and he, he just gets it. Now, I don't think we've seen the best of Logan Paul. See, that's the crazy thing is we haven't even seen the best of him. Right? I mean, this is still Logan Paul super green. What does Logan Paul look like when he starts to mature and actually you know, get his timing down to a point where... Where he looks like a veteran like this is logan ball as a green guy what does it look like when he's actually fully polished and that's the scary thing but he gets it so much in the ring like you cannot see through any of his work and when i mean work i don't mean that exclusively to his in-ring physical capabilities like he knows how to cut promos his cadence is on point he knows his character he's a d-bag by nature which i mean i guess inherently makes it easy for him to portray that on television like he's made for show business and he's clearly uh, an a-plus athlete so you put those two things together for together which is pretty much professional wrestling And this was made for him. And just because he is from an outside world, and just because he didn't go through the indie circuits or go through NXT, I don't think that he should be burned at the stake for it. Maybe there are a lot of wrestling purists who are more in line with like an indie style, for lack of better words, AEW style type of wrestling. But I get it that he's that the social media stuff and for WWE, it's very advantageous monetarily to push this guy to a prominent position. But this isn't like you're putting the U.S. title on Johnny Knoxville or something like this guy is a legit badass. He did box for real. He's really good in the ring. I, with the exception of him not paying his dues per se, there is no reason from a from a, an in-ring perspective, a creative dis- a perspective, and a business perspective, not to be positioning this kind of prominent position. No, there, there, were, there is no good reason to not. And I'm sure that the only p- the possible resistance to this are guys in the back who are jealous or are insecure about their own position or feel like he hasn't paid his dues. And, and to be honest, has he? Probably not. But that doesn't mean that if he is on the show, it's a bad thing because if fans want to see him, fans are reacting to him and he continues to deliver, you can complain till you're blue in the face that he hasn't, quote unquote, paid his dues and the boys in the back and he hasn't earned their respect, which is it's going to come, but it's got to be earned. We all know that. But at the end of the day, if he ends up delivering in the ring and showing respect and just little by little earning the guy's respect that'll come but that to me is the only resistance that i could imagine uh you know or hesitation on management's part is is this going to be a you know uh, is this going to hurt morale backstage is this going to you know piss off some guys backstage because there's a lot of guys that have been there a lot longer than he has and all of a sudden he's u.s champion he's being featured in prominent matches on on uh on wwe television he's had an opportunity at roman reigns he beat Rey mysterio and i've been here 20 years and i haven't you know 
that kind of thing. And I totally understand that argument. I, I'd feel the same way, but it all comes down to crowd reaction. It all comes down to delivering when the red light goes on. And Logan Paul has done that. Well, that's the thing. Like, I, I get that the hard work, paying your dues, like grinding for that opportunity. But as much as it's like an intangible, there is such thing as an it factor. And he has that it factor. He has the look. He has the confidence. He has the promo ability. He has the athletic ability. He has the in-ring IQ. And this is all, to your point, being a green performer. His first in-ring match was what? Was it the tag team match with The Miz at WrestleMania 38? Yeah. Was that his first match? So, I mean, and singles matches, was this not his fifth? Like, let's go through his singles matches. He had The Miz, I believe, was his first. Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Ricochet, and Rey Mysterio. Were those the... Am I missing any singles matches from Logan Paul? I don't think so. You said Roman Reigns, yeah. So, I, I don't think so. And rattle off the guys he's faced and hung with in the ring. Like, okay, The Miz, he doesn't match the other star power, but he still is a seasoned veteran in the ring. Roman Reigns, the biggest star that the company has to offer right now. Seth Rollins, arguably the best in-ring competitor right now. Rick will say, like, the guy might as well work for Cirque du Soleil. Like, he's a, he's a, like, as, as cheesy as it sounds, he is, on a, in a lot of ways, a live-action superhero. And Rey Mysterio, the best little man in the history of the company and the standard bearer for any Lucha-style wrestler. So he's hung with, like, the cream of the crop from a psychology standpoint, a star power standpoint, a legacy standpoint, in-ring standpoint, and he has yet to have even a mediocre match. Like, all of his matches have been out of the park. And that's not to even mention what he did at the Royal Rumble last year, which was astonishing in and of itself. So I get it that there is the whole paying your dues stuff, and that applies to a lot of walks of life. But he has that it factor, and he has done nothing promo-wise, creative-wise, uh, in ring wise to not position him where he is right now no that's again i that is what it comes down to at the end of the day is did you deliver are the fans reacting to you do you feel like you belong and as you said do you have the it and logan paul has the it guys in the back hey i'm sure there's a lot of them that don't like him or are jealous or are portraying their own insecurities on him and that's just natural I'm not blaming them for it but he, he he is the best choice right now for u.s champion he can work with anybody anybody they put in front of him at least from what i've seen so far he's he has yet to have a stinker of a match and you see what he did with the Rey mysterio match um at crown jewel where he saved the life of ray now you could argue again that was he in position where that that actually shouldn't have happened and he should have been closer to ray sure i mean there is maybe a little blame to put on logan but he still heads up enough and smart enough and realizes, hey, uh, you know, that, that instantaneous fraction of a second reaction that he had to catch Ray, if he didn't, of course, the, the consequences, as we all know, would have been devastating or fatal. I mean, literally, it would have been absolutely awful. And to, for, for that to, to be something that Logan Paul can put under his belt and that for management, I'm sure that was not lost on them. That kind of stuff is, uh, you know, you, you are protecting the guy you're working with. That, of course, is the number one priority, and he has shown that, and he hasn't done anything stupid outside the ring. He's He has his own podcast. We know that, but he has really matured, at least outside the ring, from what I understand, and you know that's also super important. He is the guy. He's also super young. I mean, he, he is youth. He's athleticism. He's star power. He's got every box you'd want to check for the making of the next star in the company. What you gonna do, brother, when the crypto bull run comes to you? The ticker is SmackDown on Ethereum blockchain, brother. We're the first and only wrestling-themed crypto, and we're bridging wrestling and cryptocurrency to make the most electrifying meme coin in crypto history. Ooh. Meme coins like Doge, Pepe, and Shiba Inu are leading the upcoming bull run, and we got the juice to turn our two passions into the next crypto phenomenon. Join the community at SmackDown.pro. The coin is Stone Cold Rock Cena Macho McMahon SmackDown 10 Inu, and the ticker is SmackDown. Just remember, brother, it's for life. And even the fact that he has been a D bag on the uh, like in the real world, he's done some questionable things. He's he said some questionable things. He is a YouTube sensation, but 
in a real way, doesn't that make his character more, maybe not endearing, but more relatable? Like, I think he's around my age. I'm 29 years old. And guys my age, my buddies, and I'm sure you're not far from my age either. Like, what, nine years older than me, yeah. I believe. Like, we've all done stupid you-know-what when we're young, right? And the fact that we're seeing, like, a real-life guy portray his real-life F-ups onto WWE programming kind of makes him relatable, even if he is a D-bag, but he's kind of like, in college, the frat guy that every girl wants to be with and every guy wants to be and that kind of makes you hate him, but at the same time, live vicariously through him at, uh, all mm-hmm. at the same time, if you if that does kind of uh, appeal to you in some ways. So, I don't know. I know he's supposed to be a heel, and I know he's a D-bag in real life and on screen, but there's something that is kind of endearing about him, and for some guys, I'm sure, relatable about him as well. Yeah, he's got that charisma that you just, you, whether love or hate him, you can't deny he has it. I'm not even talking about... You know, in the ring, he's got it and it translates perfectly. But you can just take him and place him in a frat house and you're like, I know exactly who this guy is. Like you you, you just know outside. Everyone knows kind of who a Logan Paul is in their life, even if you're not friends with them, just kind of acquaintances or maybe arch enemies or whatever. You know what kind of guy he is and you can't deny that even if you don't like him, he's got it. And that's what he's bringing to the ring here. And I think it's going to translate very well. And ultimately, I think he's going to have a very successful career, barring injury or barring, he, you know, maybe he wants to leave WWE and go back to boxing. We don't know. I mean, we've seen guys, well, particularly Brock Lesnar, do kind of the dual UFC WWE thing. And it worked out for Brock, but uh, we'll see how much leverage Logan Paul has. If he's diving headfirst into this, I would imagine he's going to be there for at least the next year full time. And seeing what that brings and seeing how he matures is going to be a fun project to watch. I think they're going to, when I look at the rain here, I'm thinking that they're going to take this on a case by case, month by month, PLE by PLE, because they don't have a whole lot to work with with Logan Paul when it comes to in ring, big stage, big moments. He's delivered thus far, but there's a larger body of work they need to have him show them before he decides, yeah, this is our guy for the next, you know, five years. There's a long way to go. But there is not anybody I can think of in the last 20 years outside of Kurt Angle that has come along that I've said, oh, my God, like this, this guy, it feels like he's been here 10 years and he's been here. What? A couple. The first thing I remember is Kevin Owens stunning him. I think it was a WrestleMania 38. Was it? Or yeah. 30, yeah. He was so, like the special ref or enforcer for Kevin versus Sammy or something like that. Yeah. And I remember them trying to get him cheered and Kevin Owens stunned him. And I'm like, that, that's exactly what I wanted to see. So, th- th- of course, they could pull on that if Kevin wants to face Logan. But, yeah, this is this is going to be a lot of fun. I, I have no complaints thus far. And a heel champion is always a better one in my eyes because baby faces in chase mode is, is, is a better formula. So with no pay-per-view or PLE between now and Royal Rumble, is there a way to use you, Logan Paul in the U.S. championship in a fashion that makes it feel important? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, and this is what I've thought about what they're going to do since there's no PLE to, to, to fill the gap in December is they're going to have a, you know, more championship matches, especially in December, than they otherwise would have to kind of make it feel like there's important things going on even though there's not a PLE to make it an official platform to have those matches. So, you know, you'll probably have another world title match. You'll, you, you know, you, you'll definitely have, like, I would imagine a United States title match uh, as we get into December after Survivor Series when, you know, you're getting close to the end of the year and, uh, you know, maybe mid-December or so, they're going to start throwing in U.S. title matches and, you know, trying to make maybe a triple threat between Kevin Ray and uh, and, and Logan Paul. That seems to make sense. L.A. Knight will probably be still messing around with Jimmy Uso. But, uh, yeah, they'll probably have uh, more championship matches than otherwise they would have because they got eight weeks of television to fill. Maybe it's more. too much, isn't it? it? It's, it's, it's insane. Like I hear, I feel like there's some parts of the year where there's too many pay per views, but now there's not enough. Like for me, could you have not moved Fast Lane or Payback into December? Like for me, Fast Lane was kind of a useless pay per view. Not to say that there wasn't good that came out of it, but you had two pay per views. You you basically now have had. Uh, what will it be? Three pay per views in two months, and then you're going two months with no pay per view. Yeah, and that's what I don't understand. And 
I look historically at pay-per-views in that December month. Like, day one was brilliant, but I also know that the calendar doesn't always fall in a way that allows you to do that. New Year's Revolution was a really good pay-per-view way back when. Armageddon, maybe the name could stand to be changed, and there's a reason why they don't use that pay-per-view anymore. But, like, I felt like Armageddon was always a pay-per-view that delivered, whether that was Chris Jericho as the first ever Undisputed Champion, the Night of Shine where Evolution walked away with all the gold at Armageddon 2004, the Armageddon um, Hell in a Cell match, which was kind of like the precursor to the... Um, to, well, not the precursor, kind of like the predecessor to the Elimination Chamber in 2000. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I think that that was always a very important pay-per-view and really got the ball rolling into the Royal Rumble season and was the buffer between two major pay-per-views of Survivor Series and Royal Rumble. But now it's almost like that that no pay-per-view in, in December hurt Survivor Series in a way in some odd fashion. And not only that, it just causes a major lull around the holidays. That, that's just it. And, and I made this on my I made this case last night on my weekend review. Is what's their logic? They would tell us, "Well, people are busy in you know December, and it's the holidays." And uh, um, well, what does the NFL do? Does the NFL take a, a week off? I mean, people are more engaged in their screens and televisions in December probably than a lot of other months during the spring and summer months when it's warmer. People are outside; they're taking vacations. What do they think people are literally at the mall all the time going, well, I have no time to watch any TV. They're like, well, what, what do they think people are doing? I think that's kind of a antiquated uh, thought process. Really? I understand why people think that way and why companies feel or WWE feels that way, but it just, it, it actually is kind of counterintuitive. I, I don't mind if you want to kind of hold this, you know, hold steady. Don't do anything crazy till the rumble season starts. And when WrestleMania season officially starts, Fine, but you can hold a PLE. There's no reason not to hold a PLE in December. There really isn't. People will find a way to get there. There's there's no good reason outside of just, well, it's the holidays. Uh, what about the rest of the, There are major holidays throughout the rest of the year that arguably people are less home for. That, I mean, 4th of July, people are taking vacations. There's usually something going on around the 4th of July. I mean, hell, I mean, around Thanksgiving. Survivor Series is what? Two days after Thanksgiving here in the United States? And so, like, where are people? Are, are they not with their families? Are they not traveling? And suddenly we can do a PLE here. So I just, I, I don't know outside of, well, it's the holidays, people are busy, why they don't do a PLE in December. What is the good reason? You don't have to do anything major, anything revolutionary. Just hold the course. Don't do anything crazy. And then, uh, you know, do, you, you know, do your next event at Rumble and really get things into gear. Well, like for you, would you have a like a gimmick pay per view, a championship match pay per view? Like you, you've had day one, you've had elimination, well, not elimination chamber, but New Year's Revolution that often had elimination chambers. December to dismember, uh, Armageddon, Hell in a Cell. Like, what kind of pay per view do you think oh, would yeah. be advantageous to put in in a December? Oh, I, I would, I would bring back Taboo Tuesday. I'd go wild. I mean, like that, that. That's what I would do. I mean, in this digital world, t- Taboo Tuesday was ahead of its time. And, and I had no issue with it. And sure, people could say, oh, the results were rigged. I don't think they were. I mean, they put decisions or choices in there. They knew people probably were going to choose. And so they kind of swayed the way people should vote. But I ultimately think you could, you know, not chip away at the goodwill of fans and make them believe that the results are real because I think they are. And you do something crazy like that. You could do a Taboo Tuesday or a, come up with a something Saturday so it's not during the week. You could do that, too. So it's not interfering with people's work days. And you could do that, but that's what you would do. So where it's like, oh, December. Now, December is kind of fun. It's never a massive event, but at least they're doing a PLE where it feels like I can interact and I can see the results I voted for. Are they going to come out on the event? Or like, what did other people vote for? What are the voting results? In this ultra digital world where people are glued to their screens, I think that it's a no brainer to do something like that and have voting uh, for, for fans and having them be able to actually be a physical part of the show. That's what I think they should do, and that's what I would do in December. Make it fun, make it kind of lighthearted, but there are serious results that could result. So that's what I would do. But one thing, no matter what kind of pay-per-view it would be, it would have to involve the world champion, right? And not to go on a Roman Reigns diatribe, but the fact that he is not only going another two-plus months without defending the championship, but he's missing Survivor Series. Like, this is a like, I don't even know if I would consider it a big four pay-per-view anymore. It feels like Crown Jewel has overtaken it. 
just as a result of the sums of money that they get from Saudi Arabia to go over there. But now it's become a well, it's been a gimmicky pay per view for the better part of a decade, it feels like. But now it's the biggest star and the most prominent championship you have in the company are not going to be featured on the show. You're not going to have a world title defended on the men's side of things. Like, you know, we'll talk maybe about Survivor Series as a pay-per-view and what it's become since, let's say, 2016 at a later time when we get closer to the actual pay-per-view. But, like, is there anything left to be said about what has gone on the last year or so with Roman Reigns' title run? No. I mean, I feel like I'm going to just, you know, beat a turn on the broken record, take it off, beat it again and and try to repair it because I I feel like I am saying the same thing with this. But this is it's getting to the point. I don't even know what to say anymore. I'm actually at a loss of words. And look, if it is health related, if his cancer is back and that's the reason he's taking more and more time off, it's if you notice it's getting worse as we go on, it's not improving, it's getting worse so I, I, if it's health related, by all means, man, take the time off all you need, spend time with your family, whatever you got to do. But don't don't don't, uh, you know, sacrifice everyone else's careers and livelihoods simply for just looking. Oh, another day's passed. Oh, another day's passed. Oh, we can add uh, five weeks, six weeks, eight weeks to his reign. Oh, cool. Oh, like th- that. That is beyond the point of return for me like that is not something i even care about anymore i really don't even care if he beats hulk hogan's record i i actually don't give a damn about his record anymore because i realize that no matter what they do there is nothing they can do to repair all the damage that they've done that they'll never know they did but that is inherently there meaning guys that could have had opportunities to be world champion or undisputed champion and main event with Roman Reigns or main event with whoever and work with whoever will never know all the damage that that could have been all at the altar of Roman Reigns ticking off day after day after day and then not showing up more and more and more. So um, I don't even know what your original question was, but that's how I feel. No, it was just like, uh, I know we're getting up against it time-wise, but it, it just really kind of feels... That we, it's it's at the point of, and I know I said this last week and probably the week before that, but like the point of diminishing returns, where the longer they go with this, it just dilutes it. And I feel like, I, I want to say since WrestleMania, but they did have the Civil War stuff that had a, it had a shelf life and a short one at that, but it, it was fun. But it feels like really since that Sami Zayn, uh, defeat at Elimination Chamber, not just because I was there. It feels like it's been a slow descent into maybe not darkness, but just like holding the title run the farther you get. And as soon as they pass a thousand days, I feel like that's like the clock's been ticking here. And I know they've referenced the two runs that he's coming up on Hulk Hogan and what's the other one? Um, Bruno San Martino. Two. Bruno San Martino. Yeah, San Martino has two runs in the top three. Yes. So. Look, I I can imagine they could bring this past WrestleMania. I know I said this last week, but, you know, I'm no Cody Rhodes guy, but I'd rather him face Cody Rhodes at this point than The Rock or anyone else just because I think Cody Rhodes put in the same position would win the championship, and I just need to see someone else hold that title. And if you want to position Roman Reigns as the new Brock Lesnar, that's all fine and dandy, but you can't have him hold the most important title hostage for three plus years. So it's unfortunate because I still really do like Roman Reigns. And when he's on the television, he captivates me. And there's a reason why they pushed him to this uh, particular spot, especially in his character. But his schedule has just made it, uh, it, it, it. They can't do it anymore. And, you know, when we get to WrestleMania season, it will be two years that he's on this part time schedule. And it, enough is enough at this point. Right. And, and to kind of put a closing you know, exclamation point on that, it's he's not gaining anything by getting more days. All that's happening is our guys are losing by him gaining more days. There's there's nothing to be gained anymore outside of a stat that they want to get to that they feel is going to you know, define Roman's career that that to me is what they are thinking. And it's all at the sacrifice of other guys on the roster who are like, what the hell is going on here? Um, and, and that's who I feel bad for. And the fans, of course, as fans, it's just so frustrating. It's it's heat on the company, not heat on Roman. Good for him. Good for him. all of his you know money. He's collected all of his schedule and all the time off. Good for him. Seriously. 
it's just there's nothing left to be gained. I don't care even if he ends up beating, he becomes the number one longest reigning champion of all time. I don't care. That doesn't matter to me more or fans, I think, anymore. I think fans are just like, can we just move on? It's all like WWE is doing this selfishly so they can anoint Roman in, in while they're in power and while they are in management, and while the creative has the opportunity, they're saying, we're not going to be able to do this again. This is a hell of a run in our, in our lifetimes. We may not be able to do this. Let's just go all the way with it. So it's almost a selfish milestone that they're trying to achieve with Roman and saying, well, the fans will deal with it. You know, they'll, they'll complain. They got Seth over there on raw. They'll be fine. I think it's, it's beyond its shelf life. I understand some of the bloodline stuff and a lot of it was very good, but Roman doesn't need to be champion anymore to be entertaining. He has beyond, he's beyond the championship. He can be entertaining without it. And there's a whole baby face around to be had with him without the belt. So that's how I feel. It's so true. Right. And like, if, if you're making him into the new Brock Lesnar, which feels like that's what, how they're positioning him, that's fine. And Brock, Le- the, the only thing is, is that Brock Lesnar had a legitimacy about him that made you believe that, oh yeah, this guy could go back to MMA at any point or go back to his farm in Saskatchewan. Like he doesn't need the WWE. As much as they've done a good job building Roman Reigns to feel bigger than the WWE, he just isn't. Like, that's just the fact of the matter. He's not a Hollywood star. He's not an MMA star. He didn't come close to making the NFL like Brock did. Like, like Roman Reigns doesn't have that same cachet. And it was Brock's thing to just do what Brock wants when Brock wants. But I get it. I understand. They've attached Paul Heyman to Roman Reigns. I get the, I get the story they're trying to tell. But they've pushed it so far. And even peak Brock Lesnar was th- was not this absent. Like, for God's sakes, Brock Lesnar had a match against Samoa Joe at Great Balls of Fire. Like, that's the <laughs> most B-level pay-per-view that you could find. So even peak Brock Lesnar was not as part-time as Roman Reigns. Boy, what, what an underrated match, an underrated program that I think could have been. Yeah, I think what really hurts that program is that it was on a pay-per-view called Great Balls of Fire. Because that Whose is idea a, was that? Just, I, I don't know, but it hurt everything on that show because I'm just like, what's the name of this thing? I mean, you have a, a matchup that I, I mean, I remember that. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to get into this, but it was a matchup that I was really looking forward to. I loved it. I think they could have done more. And I'm like, oh, but it's under that Great Balls of Fire pay-per-view. I'm like, could they name it anything else? Anything. And uh, yeah, so. All right. Well, uh, any final thoughts here, comments? We're going to wrap it up. Um, I guess my only thing would be is that I am excited for Survivor Series in a weird way. But the fact that there's no significant titles on the line on the men's side of things has really kind of got me let down in some way agreed and maybe that'll be our topic next week is like how how survivor series doesn't feel like the big four anymore on paper i think it does on paper we're told it does but it's been so gimmicked up over the last 10 years or so that it's like I don't know if I really feel that way anymore with all the brand manufactured brand rivalries that meant absolutely nothing to now the, the war games match, which has its good and bad to it. But yeah, maybe that'll be our topic next week. Yeah. Well, as soon as it's coming fast, right? Like we go through weird stretches where there's no pay-per-views like there will be in December, but then somewhere it's nonstop. Like it's felt like it's been since uh, the beginning of October. Exactly. Right. So, all right. Well, everybody uh, check out the brand new uh, After Dark show that Anthony dropped on Friday. It's John Cena and the future of the U.S. title. And I hope you guys check that out. If you're on the uh, NXT Plus or SmackDown tier and higher, you'll be able to listen to that. And I hope you guys check that out. It's going to be uh, it's a good, good listening experience, especially very relevant to the U.S. title um, uh, conversation that we had tonight. So, Anthony, say, thanks so much for joining me tonight, and I will be chatting with you next week. Yeah, man. Looking forward to it. What you gonna do, brother, when the crypto bull run comes to you? The ticker is SmackDown on Ethereum blockchain, brother. We're the first and only wrestling-themed crypto, and we're bridging wrestling and cryptocurrency to make the most electrifying meme coin in crypto history. Ooh. Meme coins like Doge, Pepe, and Shiba Inu are leading the upcoming bull run, and we got the juice to turn our two passions into the next crypto phenomenon. Join the community at SmackDown.pro. The coin is Stone Cold Rock Cena Macho McMahon SmackDown 10 Inu, and the ticker is SmackDown. Just remember, brother, it's for life. 
Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash WWE Podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.